talk. We can talk all day long, if you will. I need a cobra crown. Let's go ahead. Very good. Thank you, Thank you for coming out. Uh, let's get everybody up here on stage. Without further ado, Ralph Macchio. Stand here, not to keep it awkward. Welcome, Ralph. Yes, is whichever seat like, you like will. Oh, Squish right in between. Myself? Yes. <laughs> all right, <laughs> guys. Thanks for all coming. All the pictures, all the cameras. So it's uh, this is the 30th anniversary of the Karate Kid, and, and we look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's funny, there's a great Philly connection here. Uh, John Abelson, yes. the director of Rocky, uh, actually shot, uh, he directed The Karate Kid, and for me, growing up, this was far and away the most iconic film. It was, I lived and breathed Karate Kid. So how does it feel, 30 years later, that, I mean, this film, it, it runs almost daily, it's everywhere. I don't think that there's anybody in the world who doesn't know what the Karate Kid is. Well, uh, listen, we, we certainly didn't know. We thought we were doing something good. Uh, I'll speak for myself, but I, I mean, I felt, you know, who, who knows that, uh, and who could ever imagine that 30 years later, this Sunday, birthday Sunday wow. from the Karate Kid, June 22nd, 1984, uh, would resonate uh, to so many generations, which parents have handed off to their kids, families who watch this movie. You know, there's uh, it's some of these dialogue from this film, and you know, the sweep the legs, the wax on, wax off, the <laughs> body bag, the <laughs> body bag, and catching flies with chopsticks, crane kicks. I mean, it's it's really astounding and uh, and beyond rewarding to be connected to something that has touch so many people and that, and it really touches people on a human level and I think that's why it, it resonates. But uh, I, I thought, you know, I thought I was decent when we were making it. I thought, you know, he was a great villain and the bad guy sucked and the, you know, and the girl was kind of cute and the, the, and the human Yoda was awesome. <laughs> But I had no idea that we'd be sitting here and I, I find it a privilege. I'll shut up. It's Marty's turn. <laughs> Uh, to be perfectly honest, when I read the script, I was doing a TV series, Cagney and Lacey, and I had done yeah. a lot of, thank you, thank you. And I'd done a lot of heavies, and I just read this script, and I said, but it's just another, this John Kreese character, and I, I remember just kind of going through it, you know, and three readings, and, uh, and then we started doing the movie, and I think this the magic started happening where things sort of fit together where in some movies they don't quite fit together as well it's more of a struggle and here we were doing things I remember that big camera dolly shot when you first come into the oh yeah it was the, called a luma crane 36 takes yeah right wow. this is introducing the tournament right is yeah. that what you're talking about it was this big shot where Miyagi and Daniel come in with, uh, uh, with Ali and then and we walk through and he's trying to tell me how to wear the belt and what to do and yeah, that was a big, big you, shot. You got a whole sense of how important the tournament was and the participation in the tournament by, by um, Daniel and Miyagi and what was going to go on. You got a whole sense of it just by the massive shot that was. And I remember laughing a lot because we were doing nothing for so long while they were trying to get it right. But it, would, you know, it just turned out to be brilliant. You know? and, but to answer that question in short, that to be part of an iconic piece like this, it's, uh, it, 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 you don't ever expect it, number one. And we were just talking about Casablanca, mm -hmm. a movie of the 40s where always such difficulty in making it, who are you going to cast, whatever. Is it going to be a B film on a, on a, a, two, on a double bill that afternoon? turns out to be one of the most perfect films ever made, you know, so you never really know, and that's the exciting thing about cinema, I don't think you ever really know. Sure. 
I mean, go, going into a project like this with 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 John Avildsen attached to it, uh, I mean, was that was that a big push for you to accept a script like this? Well, for for me, I would love to say yes. It took Avildsen to bring me in, but I wasn't quite at the place. I had just finished The Outsiders, so I wasn't. I was on the thing. So I was on my way up the little ladder, but I wasn't in a place that. I need to see who the director is, otherwise I'm not doing this picture. <laughs> but uh, I certainly remember walking into Avildsen's uh, office, it was his apartment on the Upper upper East Side of Manhattan, and uh, I had this script called The Karate Kid, and I was like, oh, what a terrible title. <laughs> um, you know, at that, at that point, and hence why I don't run a studio. Um, but uh, I remember passing uh, posters of his other films, uh, Save the Tiger with Jack Lemmon, is a wonderful film, and, and Rocky was certainly there, and, which Avildsen always thought that he would be making the Karaki kid, <laughs> because it was, you know, similar. But uh, certainly when I walked to my audition to meet him for the first time and saw some of these these films that were posters of films he had directed, it certainly upped uh, the, the, uh, the pedigree of what I was walking into, and, and so that became uh, maybe more nervous. But uh, I fortunately did the right thing. Had you seen The Leading Lady yet? Uh, no, Elizabeth Shue came in to read when they, I, I did my first reading. And uh, incidentally, a lot of this stuff, and Marty knows this, John Avelson has his own YouTube page, and he has he has my first audition. Uh, he's got he's got rehearsals from the film with all of us. That was before the film was shot. Um, so you could virtually watch almost every scene of the movie before we ever shot the movie, wow. and it's very very telling. Um, it's great it's great stuff if you have a couple hours to kill in the middle of the night. But um, and Elizabeth, once I read uh, audition, uh, he asked me to come back two days later, which is often a really good sign. And, uh, and Elizabeth Shue was there, and we, the whole uh, alley with an eye and all that stuff. And, and those scenes, I think, are available to see those audition scenes. So. You know, I, I, I read somewhere years ago that uh, originally the role was offered to Charlie Sheen, and he yeah. turned it down. I, Charlie was around, because I know Charlie through Emilio and the Martin Sheen, the clan of, of Sheen's <laughs> or Stubbs's. And uh, I know I know Charlie Sheen was involved at some point. I know Robert Downey Jr. Wow. Oh, was wow. Uh, considered at one point. Um, wow. But I, I think when I wanted to read, for the most part, I mean, I remember Avelson calling me the next day. He said, "Listen, I can make this all up uh, right now, or make this decision. But uh, if I were you, I'd take some karate lessons." <laughs> <laughs> And then I still was flown out to L.A. and screen tested with uh, uh, Pat Morita. Um, his casting story is a great one. Um, and uh, Marty came, when did you come into the casting by? You were a little bit on the later side of it, I think, yeah, if, I, if, if memory, 30 years ago. Okay, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I guess yeah, when I could remember things. Um, now, uh, it was like two weeks into the movie. You were already at the receipt of Yeah, Robert I mean, they were looking for the John Cree, we, they were, and, and I, I remember they, they were looking for that, that role, um, even as we were getting started. So uh, thankfully, Cagney and Lacey gave us a window, so we got Darth Vader here to, uh, <laughs> to brilliantly play the guy we all hate. <laughs> but it was interesting because the audition process was uh, the first one you're given uh, the script on a Monday, and then Carol Jones says to me, "You have all week. We'll call you in on, you know, we'll call you at the end of the week." And the very next morning, she calls and says, "John Appleson wants to see you on the set at 12 o'clock." And you're livid because I remember, I remember you coming to the set when we were still shooting, yeah, and, and that role was still vacant at the time. Well, it was just horrible, and I used them each time, and I, I, I really had to get up to the. To the energy of mercy for the week here and on the streets when I'm ranting and raving in the dojo and I had to get up there with such venom and my and that morning my um, my wife said to me she says just use the venom you feel for these filmmakers that you, that you feel for this casting woman that you feel for this director that you have to go unprepared to this audition 
So I said, all right. And I got there and I just screamed at John Avelson and I said, you're an asshole, John Avelson. <laughs> we wait for years to meet directors of your caliber. We fire our agents, we fire our managers, and, we, and here I don't have time to prepare. Mercy is for the week here on the streets. And I went right into it and ultimately did the same thing to Jerry. And we got the part. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's take a few questions from the audience. Uh, yes, right here. Uh, go ahead. How, uh, how much karate experience did you guys have to have before the movie? Did you take any? I had, um, I, I had about five weeks. So, uh, yes, I, I had about five weeks before the first, uh, the original Karate Kid, and he, you know, slapped me into shape. But uh, certainly, for me, I had some dance training, like musical theater training. Not dancing with the stars training. <laughs> you know, basic five, six, seven, eight and stuff. So I was able to, keep, and I had long limbs, so anytime I would do something that looked good, they said, okay, we'll put that in. Because <laughs> there was other martial arts that I just looked horrible at, and that never made it into the picture. But I had about five weeks, um, which was a pretty good amount of time. And we had about two full weeks of rehearsal with, uh, with Pat Maria and Randy Heller's uh, mom and Allie and Elizabeth Shue and, uh, and uh, Billy Zapka. Um, so that was my uh, martial arts shorthand clip numbers. Pat, Pat was trained separately. I mean, Pat was trained separately. First they, gotta get, they had to get Pat Maria to touch his toes. <laughs> Once we got past that, um, I was like, how can my kid do his training? He said, they're pounding me, kick higher, do more. But yeah, we, we were trained separately. He was, um, uh, we rarely, I would train with Billy and the guys, and they were just so much better than me, all the Cobra Kai guys. Um, I had no business. But I think that's part of, not to digress, but that's part of the beauty of why this film works, is, is Daniel LaRusso represented the every kid next door. He had no business winning anything. So we all aspire to that could be us. And, and I think that's, um, that's a, a, a credit to what worked so well and the magic of, of, of the film. Um, just a footnote there. But anyway. uh, it's very true. I mean, but Pat, I think, you know, I remember his key eye, right. And I stole it from him directly because I, and, and putting hands into the belt directly from Pat Johnson. And this was a wonderful fellow that ran the stunt coordinator around with Chuck Norris in the 60s and 70s in the tournament scene and did Batman and Ninja Turtles and all this. Yeah, a he was, he's the referee in the yeah. finals. And Pat, Pat Johnson who plays the referee and he, he did all our fight choreography and all our, our training. Wow. Yeah, he, he was a consummate martial artist, you know, and, and uh, I really took my character from him. But the, the, the interesting thing was he would and many times would train you and Miyagi separately than the Cobra Kai and the Cobra Kai separately than myself just so we all would create he would cre help create that mystique right which to me was genius sheer genius questions yes right here <laughs> that's a great question, and I have a great answer for that. We, a great question. That, that scene, we must have shot four or five different separate days of trying to make that work. <laughs> One time they had a fly on a piece of like fishing line. Like, uh, it was like framed, the fishing line was taut, like really tight, and they had like a, you know, a little plastic fly on it. And they would have two guys going like this, trying to make it look. Like, but it was literally just, it looked ridiculous. So that was one day. Another time, they had a, a, one on a, like, a, like a fishing pole, and, but it would just bounce. And I would try to, and finally, this, our, our still photographer, his name was Ralph Nelson. He was able to catch flies with his hand. What? And he would actually take the fishing line and he would lasso it like a leash. And this fly would fly like pulling this fishing line. And but I, every time I grabbed the fishing line and tried, I would decapitate the fly. <laughs> so we decapitated like three poor flies. Uh, finally, I think somewhere between that, I would actually catch it and then slide down the fishing line. 
and try to stop before I actually decapitated it. And then one time they handed me chopsticks with an actual fly already in it. <laughs> so when you, sorry for the long answer, but I think this is the best part of the Q&As when you give stuff like this to the fans. At the end of the day, if you look at the film, there's the one wide shot where the fly is at the end of the chopsticks, and then there's a closer shot where the fly is further down. <laughs> Um, but uh, it took a lot of work, but a um, man who catch fly with chopsticks could accomplish anything. anything. <laughs> is, is this your first time seeing the film? How many times have you seen it? This was my second time. Have you seen The Karate Kid with Jaden Smith? What's, what's better? Uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of that was mom behind him ready to grab <laughs> 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 I did good. <laughs>